right here. Yeah. Uh, let's welcome her. She is the leader and the leader of our party from Los Angeles. On behalf of Rosanna and myself, I want to greet this Ohio celebration of our 100th anniversary. And we've got a lot to celebrate. For 100 years, our party has been in the thick of the class and democratic battles in this country. And that includes here in the Buckeye State. Today, we remember the name of Charles Ruthenberg of Cleveland, who led the fight in 1919 to found our party and became its first general secretary. We remember Joe Dalit of Youngstown. You know they say, tell the truth, even if your voice shakes. Joe Dalit of Youngstown, who joined the Abraham Lincoln Brigades and fought and died defending democracy on the battlefields of the Spanish Republic. We remember Gus and Elizabeth Hall, who helped lead the little steel strike in Youngstown and Warren and who went to jail defending this party's right to participate in the political process and went on to lead this party for three decades. We remember Ed Chaka of Cleveland, who served on the party central committee. And Betty Chaka, his wife, who has when indicated is 102 years old and is still out there fighting and struggling. We remember George Edwards of Lorraine, the ex-minister turned steel worker with the pink hat, who led the steel workers rank and file and the steel workers uh, are retirees. We remember Anton Kirchmarek, Pete Costin. We remember Jim and Audrey West, who stood strong and fought for our party to survive. We remember Frida Katz. <sighs> and we remember our dear comrade, Wally Kaufman. Wally was, a, as also when indicated, a wonderful working class leader of this party. I could go on, but suffice it to say that because of these courageous women and men, we stand here today able to look back at our past and forward to our future. These were women who, after the steel strike picket lines were attacked and workers were killed and heads were bloodied, returned to the line day after day until the strike was settled. These were men and women who during the 1950s literally fought uh, their way in and out of the swimming pools in Youngstown, Cleveland, Columbus, Dayton, demanding the right to swim in wild waters free of bigotry. They stood beside Paul Robeson and W.E. Du Bois in Youngstown and Cleveland when most refused to say their name and offered their homes, their churches, and their hearts and allow the voices of these two great leaders of our people to break the Cold War silence. They marched with King on Washington in 63, stood on the picket line in Lordstown in the early 60s during the auto workers strike and protested uh, the Vietnam War. It was these workers who were the first to make the call that led the AFL-CIO to call Solidarity Day. And when the steel industry collapsed in the 70s and 80s, it was these communist workers who led the fight to save our jobs in Youngstown, in Cleveland, in Gary, in Chicago. But the eyes of those who came before us were not only brothers and sisters fixed on our own struggles here, no. Their vision was also cast abroad. And yes, they fought for Mandela's freedom. They fought for an independent Palestine, and they fought for an end to the blockade of Cuba. This, comrades and brothers and sisters, is our history, and we ain't gonna let nobody take it from us. 
But I want to say that uh, today that as great as this history is, it is not enough. Today we are called upon to make a new history, to engage in new battles, standing side by side with our people and with our class. Today we face a uh, challenge as great or perhaps even greater than any in our history. One of those challenges is named Donald Trump and the group of Ku Kluxes and neo-Nazis grouped around his administration. And that's what they are, Ku Kluxes and neo-Nazis. And don't let nobody tell you nothing different. And defeating them is as important as defeating Hitler and Mussolini during World War II. In fact, it's more important. And that means supporting the effort to impeach Trump in the House of Representatives and his trial in the Senate. It means bringing every pressure to bear and building a mass movement demanding that Trump be impeached now. We can't leave it to the politicians, the people, we the people have to keep the pressure on. And obviously it also means organizing and mobilizing everyone we know to come out and vote in next year's election because the GOP has to be defeated up and down the ballot for dog catcher, for school board, for city council, for state rep, you name it. It's hard to imagine how we can move forward without this kind of effort. We've also got to support, as has already been pointed out, the striking motors at general, the striking workers at General Motors, who are soon to be joined by the other workers of the big three. It is the most important strike of the last decade, and a lot will depend on how it turns out. Look at it this way. Next year's election, will be decided in the swing states of Ohio and Michigan and Wisconsin. And this is where a big section of these workers live. And if the UAW wins the strike and Trump and the big banks and GM's role is exposed, well, you can guess what's gonna happen then on election day. And while we're doing all of this, we've got to support the Green New Deal our towns and cities here in Chicago need to be rebuilt, and they re need to be rebuilt on a sense sustainable basis. Y'all know what I'm talking about. And that's what the Green New Deal provides, green jobs and a just transition. And lastly, lastly, as we engage in these struggles, we've got to build this party. And that's exactly what we're gonna do, why? because our working class and people need the power and the vision, the power and the unity of our working class revolutionary party. And so we're gonna build this party and once again, ain't nobody gonna stop us. Not Trump, not Pence, not Pompeo, not Steve Miller, not General Motors, not U.S. Steel. And when that happens, that will be really something to celebrate. Happy, happy birthday.